Okay, Brandon. First of all, your name? Uh, Brandon Bartoskowitz. Spell your personal last name. It's B R A N D O N B A R T O S K E W I T Z. You're in law enforcement, Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been there? I've been there for 12 years. 12 years, and then what, homicide now? Yep. Kind of homicide took you through, uh, ended up sending you to San Antonio for a conference. Tell me about the conference and sure. your cold case. Yeah, so it's uh, SAHIA, um, the Southeastern Homicide Investigators Association. Uh, they have an annual conference, and this year it was in San Antonio. And uh, our agency sent several of us to, to go uh, attend the conference. And uh, while I was there, they have you know, vendors that, that provide certain types of technology that are useful in our field and that sort of thing. And uh, one of the folks that I met at a networking event was Identifinders International. And uh, they're a company that uses genealogy and genetics to find, uh, to solve cold cases uh, and find either cold case suspects or identify long-term missing person victims or, um, you know, Jane Doe, uh, John Doe type unidentified bodies. So uh, I got speaking with them, and I asked them if they did any work on living cases. And uh, they said that they didn't ask what my, what my case was. And I, I told them, well, I, I was adopted at birth, and I don't know anything about my birth parents. So I was wondering if y'all could uh, work on, you know, use that technology to, to find uh, my, my birth mother, because I've been looking for her for about 20 years or so on and off and uh, had no luck with the, the regular avenues of, of trying to find her. So um, they were absolutely enthusiastic about it. They were really excited and they, uh, they got right on it. So they used a 23andMe profile that I had open from uh, several years prior and were able to use that raw data from the DNA to track down genetic relatives of mine. Uh, one of whom was Howard Goodson and that's my maternal grandfather. And uh, from there, we were able to find out which of his children uh, was my mother, and we identified her. And uh, you know, so for the first time in my 38 years, nearly 38 years, I got to see a picture of, of my birth mother, which was just outstanding. Now, how did uh, what is this 23andMe? Uh, 23andMe is a uh, is a company that does genetic profiling for both ancestry and for genetic. Uh, predispositions to certain types of diseases they'll do health reports and that sort of thing and that was my main concern because uh, as an adoptee you don't know anything about your genuine family history so as you get older you start you know becoming concerned what you might be genetically predisposed to as far as any type of health condition now your grand your grandfather you first found how did they how did they locate the information on him what? so uh, they used the the genetics and they were able to find a uh, a partial DNA match through one of their databases that linked him to it and, and from there they used other database research and and that sort of thing and they found articles on him he was a an 82nd airborne paratrooper in World War II so he had several news articles and that sort of thing done about him uh, and from there they you know one of the articles had an image of him and he looks you know, he has a lot of the same resemblances of, of me so um, uh, so that was really neat. We were able to, from there to, to find out which of his, his children was my mom. Now, he had how many children did he have? He had seven. Seven. And they were able to track down your, mo your mother. How? Yes. Uh, so they, uh, they were able to look at my DNA and find out that I came from a female descendant of Howard's. And uh, from there, uh, he had seven children, three of whom were, were girls. And then, just based on their ages and the, the only knowledge that I knew was that my mom was young when she had me. Uh, she would have been the the person that we, we found, and, and that's who we reached out to first uh, through Identifinders. They made contact with her, and, and uh, she she filled in the rest of the blanks. What was her reaction when they contacted her? Uh, she, she wanted to talk to me, and uh, she was really excited. She immediately said, you know, based on my date of birth, and that's my son. And, uh, and they put her in contact with me, and... I got to call her that day as soon as we made contact with her and uh, you know I texted her and said I think we might have met sometime a long time ago <laughs> and uh, she uh, we got in contact and had a good conversation and filled in all the blanks. So what about meeting her? Meeting her so I, I uh, arranged to meet with her you know as soon as we could because I uh, already waited my whole life so I, uh, I wanted to get with her 
and uh, we met two days later in uh, our hometown of, of Helotes. That's that's where uh, her whole family's from. That's where uh, you know she was living when when she had me. So we met over there uh, at uh, a restaurant, which is converted from a, a store that she used to work in when she was a kid. So it's a lot of history there too, and she you know kind of tuned me into all the places that you know she lived where she worked and I got to meet several of her siblings and you know, the whole Goodson family was just fantastic. It was the best kind of reunion I could have expected from this whole thing. What about your family reaction? So I, I told them uh, that week as well and uh, they were they were awesome. My parents did a wonderful job raising me uh, and they also have another, I have a sister that's adopted as well and they did fantastic by her. Uh, so they, they were 100% supportive of learning that information. They they knew why I was looking. They they you know did everything they could to help uh, with everything. And, and they did a fantastic fantastic job raising me. They're my parents. You know they're they're who I've known my whole life. So none of that changes. Mm -hmm. What about uh, anyone in law enforcement in the family from back then, or what got you into it? Uh, so uh, I have an uncle. Uh, uh, that that's in that was in San Antonio Police Department for for a good chunk of time, and I, I did always, uh, uh, you know, I love talking with him about what he did, and, and I did get interested in law enforcement then. Uh, but uh, I got into law enforcement through college. Uh, I got into forensics when I was in college, and that's that's kind of what led me there, and that's that's partly why I'm in homicide now is because of the forensic aspect of it. Where'd you go to school at? University of Texas and San Houston State. Okay. What about now uh, continuing with connections with them and your, your original uh, birth parents? Oh yeah, we're going to stay in touch. Uh, absolutely, that we've been we've been talking and trying to get to know one another. We're trying to catch up on a lot of a lot of time. And what about siblings from the original? Uh, original? I don't have I don't have any original siblings, but I've got a ton of new cousins. <laughs> a ton of new cousins. <laughs> What about, uh, you've got your family that you were adopted by, how many children? The family I was adopted by, uh, it's me and my sister. Oh, okay. Uh, so there, there's two of us, and then, of course, we have a huge family on, on uh, my dad's side there as well. And Has your sister looked at, try to find anything on her? Nothing at all. Okay. So you just, uh, pretty much, this really made a big deal for you. Yes, this has been a really big change. It's, it's, it's been an awesome, uh, awesome journey, you know. It's I've been looking for a long time, and to have it come full circle so quickly, uh, just within a, a week's time span at at, uh, at that conference, um, folks, Colleen, Misty, and Gretchen, they they were they put a lot of work into it really quickly, and they did an awesome job. Uh, can't thank them enough. And you know, this is it's it's a good story of adoption in general. When you first started law enforcement years ago, did you ever think DNA would get this far? The DNA was was around uh, when I when I started becoming interested in forensics in the 2000s. It was definitely there, uh, but the amount of detail that they can get now from from DNA is is just absolutely amazing. Y'all use it quite a bit too. Yes, in your investigations yeah, we use it routinely, and uh, all types of investigations that we do. Okay. All right. Anything you want to add? Oh, that's, uh, I'm fully supportive of adoption. It, it's, you know, it helps a family in their time of need. It gives another family an opportunity to raise a, a kid that, you know, they may or may not otherwise be able to. And it's a, it's a whole loving thing the whole way around. Yeah. Now, when you first adopted, you were adopted right at birth, so you, right birth. Never, you never knew your mother. Correct. Correct. Okay, and it's, uh, tell me about adoption records back then. Everything was a was a closed adoption, so it was really difficult to find any type of, of records with any useful information uh, to find her. So, without DNA, without genealogy, I'd, I'd still be looking. Were able to locate any kind of records whatsoever? No, no, just not there. Yeah. What about nowadays? Is it any easier? Uh, from my understanding, uh, adoptions are handled differently nowadays because of genetics and that sort of thing. Uh, I think, of course, some information is still limited, but uh, they do a better job of ensuring that adopted children can make contact with their parents either sometime down the road or, or whenever uh, they want to.
what would you say to someone that's adopted and thinking about, you know, trying to find a, a family member or something like that? To Absolutely do one of the Ancestry or, or 23andMe, one of those genetic DNA services. That's that's the first step uh, towards finding it. That's, that's, that's an undeniable, easy way to get it. Now, I, you know, can't guarantee that everybody's story is going to work out as well as mine did. I, I, I had the best ending that you could possibly get to this type of a story, but uh, it always helps to have that information. Now, Brian, you're able to locate, your mother had some documents too, uh, some photos. Tell me about those. Yeah, so the, when we started communicating, we started uh, texting one another, and, and she sent me a photo of uh, two documents that she had, one of which was my original sonogram, and uh, another one was a handwritten card uh, that was on a, uh, an ID that was given to her by my birth parent, by my adopted parents. And uh, I immediately saw that handwriting, and I was like, that's, that's my mom's handwriting. Uh, it's a wonderful card, and uh, she kept that this whole time. So it was, it was really neat to see. Now, your, your parents now, that your adopted parents, did they know anything back then? Just all? They knew very limited information uh, from the attorney that handled the adoption process, but, but they didn't know. They weren't holding anything from me. Mm -hmm. they, they just didn't know. So uh, when I found out and told them, I, you know, they had a lot of questions for me, too, about about her and uh, how she was doing and all that. And I was able to you know, give them some answers too because, again, it's, it's filling in the blanks for everybody. And that oh, was yeah. a really good thing all the way around.